Um, we just started this uh, a couple of weeks ago where we take a look at the portfolio every Sunday just to see how things are going. Because on this channel, we uh, like to play the long game and look out for, you know, dollar cost averaging, maybe some lump sums here and there, maybe a little bit of dynamic DCA. But uh, the question is, well, how is it going? How are things doing? Because we always have to check this portfolio, right? We don't really have to. We could set it and forget it. But sometimes it's best just to see how things are going. So this is what we got. And we filled this out, this was, um, you know, weeks ago. We started this on September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, somewhere around there. And this is what I'm actually actively dollar cost averaging right now. And that goes through Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cosmos, Arbitrum, Chainlink, Polkadot, Near, Polygon, Cardano, Algorand, Dogecoin. Now, some of these I do daily, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some I do weekly, such as like Algorand. And I've actually added some new ones in there, but I've just been dabbling. I don't know if I'm going to keep buying them, such as Alluvium. So this is just the base case to see how things are going and how we're doing as far as dollar cost averaging. So without further ado, here's what we got. So, of course, we're using uh, the great uh, tool from Ben's website, uh, DCAing and Into the Cryptoverse. And, of course, this part right here, you can sign up. It's 100% free. Links in the description. If you want to go for the big stuff, it's 10% off for the first month. Links there. But uh, I just took a look at what we're doing is we're DCA equal amounts, Bitcoin. And these are all the ones we just talked about, right? And what I want to see is just how we're doing. So we started this on September 1st. And today is October 1st. So how do we do? Well, the first month you just start putting in and we're just going to put in 100 bucks a week, right? It doesn't matter. We could put in 10 bucks a week. It doesn't matter. And I actually showed over time how like $10 a week Back in the last cycle, if you started in 2018, you'd have hundreds. Actually, just watch the video. I'm, I'm not going to get everybody's hopes up because it's, it gets kind of ridiculous. So just know that if you're like, I can't afford 100 bucks a week and all this stuff, it's okay. Because there's things, there's, there's something out there for everybody. And if you're able to, you know, watch this, maybe you can afford 10 bucks a week. I don't know. I'm not your dad. I'm not an investment advisor. And uh, this, of course, is not financial advice. So let's just go 100 bucks a week, right? Let's see how we're doing. So thus, first week, and we're, of course, this is equal amounts across all the different uh, Bitcoin and altcoins. How do we do the next week? Pretty awful, quite honestly. And this is, this is par for the course. This is the same thing that happened in 2018. Something happened in 2019. And even when I got to 2020, it was still happening to me because I was like, man, it feels like I'm throwing sand in the ocean. That's okay. For me, you could do whatever you want to do. So like the first week, I'm like, man, and Arbitrum, which I've been talking around for a lot, for some time, actually, I think it's going to do very well in the next bull run. It's the worst performer in a week. Now, that's the whole beauty of dollar cost averaging. Going week to week, hey, some people will say, you know, you really shouldn't look at it whatsoever. But I mean, I think it's something that everybody should know. Like, look, you're going to eat it for a while. And that's usually what happens. And of course, remember, we got the rules underneath me. What's the very first rule? We take a look at it. It's all gone, meaning I should never afford. I should never invest more than I can afford to lose. If you're investing your entire life savings in a Pepe coin because you heard it from somebody on the internet, I think that's not a great strategy, Cotton. But I mean, that's just me. So how about the next week, September 18th? Now things are looking pretty good, and we're actually up for most of them except for actually Arbitrum. I'm actually even. I'm pretty happy about that. Matic dot near. I'm, I'm eating it. But Doge, ETH, Bitcoin, and Adam is, is crushing it, 8.5%. I'm very happy. And then, of course, uh, as of last week, our September 25th, things change so much, right? But Chainlink is crushing it. Chainlink just had, they're working with Swift for cross-border payments and also for tokenizing assets, and they just proved they could actually do it. And then uh, Sergey, Sergey, uh, founder of Chainlink, uh, he was on a couple of, uh, of shows like MSNBC and just talking about how they're building and they're doing use cases and it sounds pretty good. So the narrative is nice. I don't know if it's going to translate, but it looks pretty good so far. So Link is my top performer at almost 17%. Algo, 3.9%. Adam, 2.7%. Solana, 2%. 1.1%. I'm sure I'm up more on Solana as of today. I think it, it grows by like 8%. That's pretty cool. So the whole thing with this is I'm going to come back to this because if we just look at September 1st, we're like, you know, well, that's great, but how's everything else? But just know that, like, as I'm doing dollar cost averaging, 
in the back of my head, I have the same voice as you have, uh, which is, look, uh, September's a bad month. Maybe you shouldn't dollar cost average because things are going to go down. In all honesty, I was kind of waiting for it. Didn't happen. Monthly returns in September, and you've heard this before from everybody. September is historically the worst month of all time, right? But why am I here? Am I here to buy things high? I'm not. I'm here to watch things collapse and everybody cry and everybody say, I can't do it. And then they're gone. And only people like you who are watching this video, the people who are not tourists, end up crushing it in the next bull cycle. That's who what I'm waiting for. And I was kind of bummed out that September was actually a good month. And that's just the truth because when I'm, when I'm dollar cost averaging, I don't want to buy these high prices. I want it to go lower. So I was like, well, I thought personally it would go lower. It did not. It was the first green, it was the first green September, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what are you going to do? And that's just, this is why I, like, why I like dollar cost averaging. It's because every time we think we're going to, we know exactly what the market's going to do, the market's like, guess what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the exact opposite. Have fun with that. So we take a look at this and then we have to start thinking about this moving forward. It's October 1st, 2023. We have a halving coming up in April, 2024. So during that time, we have to think about like how low can we possibly go? And I did this, there's a form or there's a link in the description. Uh, just it's, it's at the very bottom. It's titled, did it all time high, a little star next to it. And there's a bitly link. And what I took a look at was the top 53 in 2017, the top 53 by market cap for crypto, Bitcoin, and this is on December 17, 2017. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Cash, XRP, Litecoin, blah, blah, blah. Stuff you don't know. Populous, Ardor, Bitcoin, Monacoin, Verge. Some of the stuff you don't know. Because you run around. And uh, they didn't do so hot. But the question I took a look at was, what was the all-time low date? And was it before having? All of them. 53. All of them except for two had their all-time low before the halving in May of 2020. And those two were Veritasium, because the SEC sued them for fraud, and SALT. There was a lot of issues with SALT's lending platform, blah, blah, blah. But that's pretty good. I mean, you only had two out of 53. So what does that mean? When I took a look at the all-time low dates, it was usually one of two things. Either the all-time low date happened one year after the high in 2017. So if the high was December 17th, whatever it was, 2017, the low was in 2018. There was a couple of instances where the low was actually in the pandemic month, March of 2020. But I think if there wasn't a pandemic, we wouldn't have seen those lows because it was a very short all-time low dip. And there wasn't that many from as far as like the all-time low. So now we have to start thinking about this. How low can things go? And should I be dollar cost averaging and waiting for it out? Again, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you this. If we take a look back for the last cycles, it's always around a year from Bitcoin to its all-time low. It happened in 2013 when we hit a high of 1127. And then it took roughly a year in January 2014, just a couple of months later, it went down 85% to $172. The next cycle, 2017, it hit... $19,665, $19, and roughly, actually exactly a year later is when it hit its all-time low, which was $3,217. And even on the pandemic month in March, it was only like $5,000, but it was between 85 and 84%. Then, of course, the geniuses come out and say, look, June is the last month you're ever going to see Bitcoin below $20,000. And hit $19,000, we thought that was it. I thought it was very strange because that was only 71% from its all-time high, and then we figured out, oh yeah, well, it was actually a year later. Because remember we hit our high, this is funny, we hit our high on 9th November 2021, and when we hit our low for Bitcoin, so far, 9 November 2022, 15,000. But again, that's not 85%, that's 77% from the all-time high to the all-time low. So we'll see, I mean, who knows? I don't have a, a magic crystal ball, but uh, it just seems like it's either, usually a year afterwards, or sometimes there's like, some people call it a secondary scare when something happens. And I think that's what we could see moving forward. And then, so as we go forward to this, 
and people are like, well, we're going to see some big dips and, and it's going to be awful and it's going to be, you know, really, really uh, volatile. I think to myself, isn't that what we want as far as dollar cost averaging? Don't we want to see some massive dips and really lower our cost basis? Even if we hit the bull run, this was the last, well, this was two, two cycles ago before on 2017, 2016, 2017. Even if we're in like a bull run and everybody's super happy, we still have these massive pullbacks. What's the difference between these massive pullbacks and just these bear, bearish sentiment and everything goes down? Look at this. I mean, for the run up all the way to December 2017, you had pullbacks of almost 38%, 38, 38, 36, and 29. So when we see these types of things, we're like, well, maybe that's what I want to see. Maybe that's how things work. And then not to be outdone, remember this? In the last, in 2021, what do we have here? Well, we're coming up to 40,000, then we drop down to 34,000. This is in January of 2021. And then we rock it back up to 57,000, and we go all the way down to 44,000, and so on and so forth. And then we think, this is it? 62,000, and what does it do? It goes all the way down to 32,000, 50%, to well to where it actually hits its all-time high in 9th of November, 67,145. So again, if we're in a bear market or we're in a bull market, we're still going to have these pullbacks. We're still going to deal with the volatility and the different the, the percentage drops. So to me, I think to myself, this might actually be a pretty good time. But the question then becomes, well, Rob, there's this, there is a uh, recession on the horizon. We keep hearing about it. Everybody's talking about it. It should actually happen, right? I think it, I think we will have a recession, quite honestly. I thought it was going to happen in the Q4 of this, uh, this year or maybe in Q1 of next year. I also thought that September was going to be a pretty awful month, and I was wrong about that one too, but a lot of people out there think it's going to be a recession. So I talked about this in depth on the 80-20 video we did a couple of days ago where we took a look at the all-time lows. And I talked about it, I go, even though we, we hear about recessions, it's not the most awful, scary monster that's under the bed. That's awful. Recessions are a natural cycle. And in all honesty, if we do see a recession, the average is 10 months. And that's going back, that's, that's from all the different recessions we've had going all the way back into 1948, where it was 11 months, 1948 to 1949, 11 months. So we take all these recessions, we average them out 10 months. Does that mean we're going to have the market go down for 10 months? No. That's not what we mean. Because if we take a look at this, let me pull it up. Oh, no, no, no. I'll, just, I'll, I'll steal it from here. So if we take a look at this, and I talk about this in the video, A20 video. Even though, Even though we have a recession, the recession is not the economy. I mean, excuse me, the market is not the economy. So when we have a recession in these, these, these gray areas, remember that even though the recession may last for 10 months or however long it actually lasts at this point, the market bounces back first and then the economy recovers. So even if we have it as, as 10 months for a recession, what does that mean? Nine, eight months is when, when the market's down. Wouldn't we kind of want that as far as dollar cost averaging? I'm just saying. And again, watch the A20 video. I know people are scared about the recession. I know we were also scared about a pandemic. I know we were also scared about different wars that are breaking out. I'm sure, and I remember that we were scared when everything happened as far as for money printing, stopping, and then it just starts back up. So I think there's some narratives that kind of scare us out and we really shouldn't do that. But again, every time I think I know where the market's going, it doesn't, that's why I dollar cost average and move forward. So. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. It's just a little thing to be aware of about what's going on. And then also, how would you guys like some free crypto? Pretty good, right? I am giving away 100,000 Sweatcoin over the next two weeks, as a matter of fact. I'm also giving away 10 different NFTs from Sweatcoin. Now, before we get into this, let me just tell you right now, uh, I'm super biased on Sweatcoin. And the reason is because I own a boatload of it. So when I talk about these things, I mean, obviously, when I do different things about the news and things that are going on, what I usually talk about, <clears throat> Bitcoin, 
Ethereum, Solana, Cosmos, Arbitrum, Chainlink, Polkadot, Near, Polygon, Cardano, Algorand, Dogecoin, Luvium, stuff like that. Why? Because I own it. And I'm super biased. Again, you don't see any kind of title that says financial advisor, do you? So just be aware that that is what is happening. But the good news is this. I am, um, I partnered up with uh, Sweat Economy to give away 100,000 Sweat Coins. The question you may ask is, well, how's that going to work? Very simple. There's a link in the description. And this is the tweet that I put out this morning. And very simple. Just follow me on News Asset, follow Sweat Economy, comment below and retweet, and then fill out this form to actually win, and we'll draw the winners live next time that we get together. And uh, that would uh, be it for that. But there is well, there's a couple of things. First of all, people are going to say, well, Rob, how much is that? Well, right now, just so everybody knows, Sweat Economy is uh, a little bit under a penny. And I'm giving away 100,000, not to one person, but to 20 people. So that'll be 5,000 Sweat tokens. And uh, if we take a look at it, actually, Sweat's been going pretty good. Last 24 hours, I don't really, I don't really care about this 24 hours. It's dumb. Seven days, it's been on the upward trajectory. 14 days, looking pretty good. 30 days. Not bad. 90 days, pretty stable. Last six months, eh, not too good. It was about, it was just under 0 0.009. Now it's at 0 0.009. So it's roughly a penny. And it actually has all topped out around seven cents. So there's that. And then, of course, people will say, well, Rob, what about, what about the tokenomics? Aren't they awful? Not really. Here's the tokenomics. First of all, the ecosystem itself, that's for all the staking that you want to do in NFTs, the foundation treasury. Of course, when you, when you take these steps, they're going to have to give you something. That's called sweat, the sweat token. And the sweat code treasury, we got to keep the lights on. Community, that's you guys. That's what they sold to. Teams and advisors, seed rounds and private sale. One of these was me. So just so you know, to be 100% transparent, I bought sweat economy a year ago, the sweat token, for a penny and a half. If you want to front run me, go right ahead. Because right now I'm underwater and I'm not dumping on anybody. That would be ridiculous. <sighs> so that's it for today. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section and we'll go from there.